Okay, <clears throat> this is Charles Sterling from Sterling Power Products. Giving you a, a rough thing to look for when you're buying lithium batteries. Although the lithium cells may be all very similar, the batteries themselves are most definitely not. Now there's two markets for the lithium batteries. Now I'm going to deal with marine and automotive where charging quickly and discharging quickly is a thing. Whereas the other big market is solar where charging quickly and discharging quickly is not a thing. So basically there's two types of batteries. The vast majority are built for solar applications where you can charge them up all day after your leisure and you can discharge them at a slow rate. And none of this is a problem and also if you put a lot of them together it makes life a lot easier. So the thing to be looking for on a battery, the first thing, is the thing called the C rating. So looking for a C rating now C stands for capacity, so CAP is capacity. Now say for example you wanted a 100 amp battery. So say we had 100 amps, is this the battery you're interested in? Now if the, if the C rating for that battery, there's two C ratings, one is for the charge rate and one is for the discharge rate. Now low cost solar batteries would have a charge C rating of 0.2. Okay, so what that, what that means is you can only charge that battery comfortably at 0.2 times the rating. So if the rating is 100 amps, you can charge it at 20 amps. And then you're working with inside the capacity of the battery. Now that same battery might have a discharge rating of, uh, for example, 0.75. So the 100 amp battery you can discharge at 75 amps. Okay, now this is where the, the thing is you need to be watching. For a low cost battery, for a solar battery, 0.2C, 20 amps, is f if you've got 50 of them in a row, it's 50 times 20. There's absolutely no problem here whatsoever. And if you're discharging them relatively slowly as well, 0.7C, 75 amps times 50 of them in a row, absolutely no problem whatsoever. But you bring this on to, for example, a Mercedes Sprinter. Now the Mercedes Sprinter has a 180 amp alternator. So that's 180 amp alternator, and if you only put, say, two batteries on it, or four batteries, let's just say two for the sake of argument, Two batteries means you can, at point two C, you can charge this, the, the battery bank, which is going to be 200 amp hours, you can charge it at two times 20, which is 40 amp hours. Okay? So your safe charging sp speed is 40 amp hours, and you've got a 180 amp alternator. So you can see there's a bit of a problem. Now, you may be quite happy to put on a 40 amp battery to battery charger and charge those batteries at 40 amps. Personally, in my opinion, that makes you a bit of an idiot. I would, if I had a 180 amp alternator, I would want to be charging my batteries at around 160 amps, not at 40 amps. So anyway, maybe the 40 amp suits you. But a good lithium battery would have a C rating on the charge of about one and on the discharge, about two. So the charge would be at 100 amps for one battery, so times two batteries would be 200 amp hours. So a good lithium battery, your 180 amps is not a problem whatsoever. So it's all about the C rating. What is your C discharge? What is your C charge? What's your C discharge? What's your C charge? Now you might have on this 200 amp battery, a 3 kilowatt inverter, which is going to pull about 150 amps. You might be pulling 150 amps out. Um, with this one here, this battery here, your 0.75, 75 amp hours, uh, 75 amps you can uh, pull out, and you'll just about be able to do that at 150 amps. So you can just about do 150 amp hours there. With this one here, you can discharge a 2C, so you can do this one here at 200, 200 amp hours. 
Now, the 2C on the good batteries can probably be increased for things like, say you have a, um, a bow thruster on your boat, the discharge might be 600 amps. But you might only want the 600 amps for 15, 20 seconds. So with a good BMS and you know what it's going to be used for, you could change this here. Instead of 2C, you could make it 4C, which 4C times 200 gives you 800 amp hours or 800 amps you can discharge the battery at because you know you're only going to be doing it for 30 or 40 seconds. Now, the difference between these two units is only the BMS or the battery management system. The two batteries can look the same, the two batteries could be, you know, both 100 amp hours, but it's all down to the BMS. Now, there's two types of BMSs, and this is where we're getting to the crux of this. So there's two types of BM BMSs, one that would be used for solar, let's call it the cheap one, which is not untrue, and one that would be used for something like uh, boats or vehicles where you need the fast charge and the fast discharge, so that's, that'll be the more expensive one. So what to look for is, if you see a figure of C rating, say C, and say it says something like 0 0.2, right, for charge. And then beside it, it says something like um, uh, peak charge, uh, you know, five or four or something, so uh, peak, now, first of all, what the hell does peak say? On one side you're saying the safe charge rate or the continuous charge rate is 0.2. So in other words, a 100 amp hour battery, um, so at 100 amp hours, you're saying it's safe to charge this battery at 20 amp hours, or 20 amps. And then you're saying, but there's a peak of four. So you're saying you can charge it, you can charge it continuously at 20 amps, but by the way, you can also put 400 amps into it as well. Okay. Now, first of all, that's terribly worrying because why would you say you should only charge it at 0.2C and then turn around and go, oh, but by the way, you can charge it at four. So that'd be the first warning. Um, and the second thing is, is this policed? By that, I mean the cheap units put a thermostat in the BMS only or a temperature sensor the good units will police the rating. So in other words, if you have a good lithium battery that said 0.2 on it, and you went over 20 amps, the unit would switch off and say, hey, wait a minute, uh, we said 20 amps, you're putting, trying to put 30 amps into it, we are out, because we want to protect your battery, stop any problems. So that would be a smart BMS, which has a, um, you know, the, the, the safety aspects are policed. Now, the cheap BMS will give you the same figures and say it's 0.2, but basically we don't give a damn. If you want to put four in it and the battery goes on fire, well, don't do that. Um, but all we're saying is you could do that and maybe it'll be all right, uh, but you should only put two in it. So in other words, the, the BMS is not policed. It's just, well, we're recommending that, but if you want to do something dopey, you can and then you can damage your batteries. So it's all about policing versus non-policed units. Now non-policed units are very dangerous because people will buy this type of battery, stick it on a, say, a Mercedes Sprinter, which will charge at 180 amps, and it will charge at 180 amps into one of these batteries, and the battery will absorb the current, no problem at all because it can take up to 400 amps, and you're only putting 180 in it. But if you read the battery, the battery says 0.2C charge. So it's saying 20 amp charge, basically on that battery, and you're putting 180 amps into it. Now, a good BMS will be policed, and if it said 0.2, which a good one wouldn't say that, but I'm just making this as a point. If it said 0.2 and you tried to put 0.3 into it, it would switch off and say, you cannot do that. So that's the difference between a smart BMS and a cheap solar BMS. So don't mix these batteries up because you'll end up with a problem. Now, some people think you can just drop a lithium battery onto 
um, a system and um, you know you don't really care about it just dropping the same hole. Now if you have a one say 180 amp alternator again and you put that just straight on to say four lithium batteries okay so that's 400 amp hours of batteries for the sake of argument and you've got an 80 amp alternator here or a 180 amp alternator. If you switch that engine on that Though that set of batteries will pull 180 amps out of that alternator in a heartbeat. Will not even, as I would say to folk, the great thing about lithium batteries is they charge fast. The bad thing about lithium batteries is they charge fast. So that will melt your alternator. Make no mistake, you will destroy your alternator. Lithium batteries are absolutely brutal um, if they're connected directly to an alternator. So what you do is a thing that we make called a battery to battery charger. And really what that does is really current limits your alternator. Now I'm just going to do this as a demo, this is not actually the way you should do it. But a battery to battery charger in for the sake of this discussion would fit here. So the wire would go in, the wire would come out and you would set the battery to battery charger say to 150 amps. So the batteries here would say give me 180 amps and the battery to battery would charge, it would say no, we're only giving you 150 and that would keep a breathing room for your alternator to stop it from melting. So that's why you see a lot of battery to battery chargers being used with lithium batteries. This isn't usually the, um, the way it's wired up on, a, on a, a vehicle, I'll show you what the way it's normally wired up. You would normally have your um, alternator uh, on the, going to the starter battery. So the alternator would go to the starter battery and then from the starter battery you'd go to a battery to battery charger and then straight to there. So that way your alternator is going to the starter battery is normal. The starter battery is only going to take 10 or 15 amps or something but you want 150 amps here going to your lithium batteries. Now some people think they're being clever you know when they do this on a boat um, I've seen it on boats where they don't go directly to the starter battery. They think they're being clever by, because boat people like um, you know, split charge relays because they're cheap. So what they do is they go from the engine alternator to the auxiliary battery and then from the auxiliary battery to the starter battery and in here they put a relay. Now they think they're being cheap because they don't have to use a battery to battery charger but in that situation all that happens is the alternator is going straight to the battery and you will destroy your alternator so it's not a clever thing to do it just ends up wrecking your alternator so it's all about stopping your alternator going onto full current otherwise you're going to um, destroy that alternator. The second thing is battery chargers. You'll see a lot of uh, lithium settings appearing on battery chargers. Now there's nothing special about a lithium charge setting 14.4, 14.5, it doesn't care, it'll charge your batteries. The thing you got to watch for a lithium battery charger is when a lithium battery is empty you're going to get zero volts across here. So it's empty, it'll read zero volts because it's electronically controlled, so when it gets below a certain voltage it just goes right, I'm off. So it puts zero volts across there. That's not a problem, but there's two types of battery chargers. There's one type which needs about three or four volts here, about three to four volts, in order to tell the charger, I'm on a battery, you can fire up and work. Um, but there's zero volts here, so some battery chargers, although they've got a lithium setting, can't deal with zero volts on the terminals. So you switch your charger on and it won't charge that battery because the battery's at zero volts and your charger's going, we're not engaging because you're less than three volts. So if you've got a lithium battery charger, what you need to do is um, disconnect it from the, just to make sure you've got the right battery. Uh, you got the right charger, sorry. So your charger will have the pause and the neg, so pause and neg, which will then go on to the battery, there and there. So what you do is disconnect the pause and neg, 
then switch the charger on and put a voltmeter here across the two terminals you've disconnected and make sure you're getting 14.5 volts across here. So in other words, with, with this not connected to anything, are you getting 14.5 volts? Because if you're not and the battery goes to zero, this isn't going to work. Okay, so if you think you haven't got a lithium battery charger, do that little test, check those voltages, open circuit in other words, not connected to the battery, and you should get 14.5 volts there. If you don't, you don't have a lithium charger. And the first time your battery goes empty and you switch your charger on to charge your batteries, it won't charge your battery. Okay. The same goes for battery to battery chargers. There's various types of battery to battery charger. Uh, obviously there's the Sterling battery to battery charger range. And um, the same thing goes here on a lithium setting. You need to make sure that on a zero volts on your battery, the battery recharger will fire up. Some of the cheaper chargers won't fire up at zero volts. So your battery's empty, you switch your engine on, it's not going to work. So that's a really important thing. Nothing to do with actual lithium batteries, more to do with battery chargers and battery to battery chargers. Always remember a lithium battery will go to zero volts and if your equipment won't charge a zero volt system, in other words, go into power pack mode, then your charger and your um, battery battery charger simply isn't going to work on lithium batteries. I should say all the Sterling battery chargers have lithium setting with a power pack mode and all the battery to battery chargers have lithium setting with a power pack mode. So our stuff all does this, uh, but that's because we also do lithium batteries. Um, so obviously we match everything, but just randomly picking this charger and picking this thing here and picking that thing there, you can't say that it's going to charge your lithium battery. So those are just a few warnings um, to go over. Any problems, give us a shout at Sterling Power Products. Uh, we're in Droitwich 01905 771 -771. Go on our website and look at our battery ra range, the AMPS AMPS uh, battery range. And that's from about uh, 60 amp hours up to 400 amp hour batteries. So um, if you need any lithium batteries, give us a shout as well. Okay, thanks then, bye.